G'day everyone and welcome back to the channel. For those that are new here, this is my homemade A10C Warthog flight simulator. If you want to know how I made it or go into a bit more detail, please have a look around the YouTube channel or go to my website at thewarthogproject.com. Uh, today's video, we're going to be talking about the new addition being the standby compass. Uh, I'll show you the G meter in another video only because it's not finished yet. So that'll be another video on its own. All right, let's get into it. All right, so these are the electronic parts that you need to get this thing working. First one is an X27168, sorry, wait for it to focus. It's an X27168 stepper motor. This is the small stepper motor that you'd find in car dashboards. Uh, very inexpensive on eBay, links in the description. Next one you need is called an easy driver board. This easy driver board is to run that stepper motor. So all you need to do is connect the four pins on the bottom of that to the motor section and then the these three pins here, ground, step and direction, go to the Arduino Nano. That's an Arduino Nano, we probably all know what that is by now. Very inexpensive and controls the whole thing. And then this right here is a IR sensor. So it is three connections to the Arduino and it tells the game where the zero point on the compass will be. Uh, because I'm going to modify this to make it continuously rotating, which I'll show you right now. These X27168 stepper motors, they are pretty cheap on eBay. They're used for car dashboards. They have stops in them though. Um, so if you turn this, this shaft here, that's hard up against the stop and then you turn it that way and that's a stop just there too. So it's not fully continuous all the time. Um, it's really, really easy to modify these so that you can have them turn continuously. All you need to do is prise open the casing here, just with a screwdriver, you can see it's starting to pop open. There's four of those around it. There you go, it's starting to pop open already. There you go, that's popped off. So now you can take the cover off. That's what they look like inside. You can see on the inside here, this is what makes it stop. So this tiny little bit of plastic on there is in that channel and then that's what makes it stop. So to make it continuous, all you need to do is remove this and slice that tiny little bit of plastic off there with a knife, so I'll do that now. You just gotta remove this here very carefully so the whole thing doesn't fall apart. And then you can see just there how it's got that. You just need to cut that off with a knife. Simple as that. Now we just pick that back up, set it in there. And put the case back on. There we go, and now it freely spins continuously. So I'll just write on the back of here that I know it's modified so it's for continuous rotation and then we'll mount it. The problem with having it continuous right now is that you need a way for it to know where the zero position is. That's where the little IR sensors come in. What I'll do now is I'll show you the design of it in FreeCAD. So the first part is this motor mount. Uh, again, all of these files will be free to download in, on my website and on the links down below the video. Uh, this is the motor mount, this section here has the motor mounted on top of it. There's a little arrow there just to show you which way it's forward so you don't put it in backwards. And then this section here is a uh, Arduino Nano holder. So that's how the Nano clips into it. Uh, that is actually a remix of this design right here. So I can't take any credit for that. It was uploaded on Thingiverse and I remixed it and just um, added it into my design here. The next part that you'll need is the IR mount. So this mount here, you can see the holes where the Arduino Nano connects. Those bolts pass the whole way through and hold this section on. Uh, and that holds the IR sensor, which tells the Arduino Uno when the wheel or the motor is at a zero point. 
Next part is an LED holder. So I haven't 3D modeled the stepper motor, but it will make sense when I show it to you in a second. That section just there is designed to hold three LEDs in those little things. You can see where the legs of the LED, LEDs go in. So there's three LEDs that backlight the wheel. Uh, and then the next one is the wheel. So that's the actual compass wheel that will be mounted to the stepper motor. You can see that there's a hole in the wheel just here where a nail mounts. And then that nail that's mounted in there, when the IR sensor that's on this here detects it, it knows that it's at a zero point. And then obviously there is a body that covers it. So that's 3D printed. That's the entire body sort of casing. There's also a rear section that bolts on the rear there. That's where your USB would connect to the Arduino Nano. That's where the two connections for the backlighting fit. And then on the front of the thing, that's what it looks like at the front. Uh, so you can see that all, all, all the front section here is laser cut. You could quite easily 3D print that if you wanted to, but I just use this, um, use my laser cutter to cut these sections here. Uh, so just cut that out, cut that out, cut that out. They all glue together and there's a bit of glass in there to cover it. And then just here is I print that on A4 paper, cut it out just on a normal inkjet printer and then glue it to the wheel. Okay, so this is the motor mount that's just come fresh off the 3D printer. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfect because it's not going to be seen by anything. I did it out of black so no light shines through it. So the arrow points to the front. So this is where the face plate will be. So you know that the motor needs to be mounted that way. If you mounted it that way, the wheel would be set all the way back here. Uh, mount it that way, the wheel set sort of in the center. So that side there with the arrow on it is the top. This side here is the bottom. All you need to do is get some bolts and you just pass them through these here. That goes through like that. That goes through like that. And then, the, so this motor, I actually drill these holes out to be three millimeter so they fit on, on those bolts. Just do it carefully and you shouldn't have any issues at all. I'll um, do that now. It's not rocket science or anything. You just gotta very gently and very slowly drill this out. that I'm sure a lot of people are panicking right now so I'm gonna wreck this stepper motor but I got about 20 of them so if one fails which one has not yet it doesn't really matter there you go now it's drilled out for three mil you can see that the motor has um, little standoffs on the bottom of it that just goes like this So that's basically how the motor mounts. You can see that that hole in there is so I can pass the cables through. So once I am finally setting it up, I will solder the cables onto the tabs and they will pass down through that hole and come out to the stepper driver and to the Arduino. This stepper driver here, you can see that I've made it so it mounts upside down. I did that so it would be have the slimmest profile possible so that the um, this capacitor here wouldn't be sticking out. So I've made it so that capacitor will fit through that hole and then just two M3 screws will bolt that on. So it'll be nice and compact. So that's how the stepper driver mounts. And then the Arduino just clicks in here. It's a nice tight fit. You just gotta run two M2, I think they are, bolts up through that, which will bolt on our IR holder will stay something like that once the wheel's on and then this little IR sensor just gets double-sided taped up under there like that okay so this is the wheel you can see that it's just 3d printed uh, pretty simple to do ignore all these black marks I was um, experimenting with gluing a bit of black paper over the top of it but it didn't really work um, so all I've done is 3d print that out of white uh, and then printed out that file with the tape on it and basically cut it out and glued it on with a normal sort of stationary glue stick. You can see that there is a nail stuck through it, nothing special, just a little bit of super glue on that to hold it in place. And then that's what hits this um, sensor. So the so DCS knows where the zero point is and the zero point's north. So I've made it opposite, opposite north there. Um, 
So this is basically the complete thing ready to go. This is the indexer that goes underneath it, so it's run off the same Arduino. You can see how I've just attached some screws in there, basically so it can sit there without fouling on anything. And then I can adjust the height of it so it's straight when it's in the container. Uh, you can also see that, that little 3D printed thing that I did with the LEDs in there. So they, the wheel, which just press fits over the top on that, will be backlit by those three LEDs. It's not super bright because of the nature of the black paper. In the future, I might paint this and engrave it. It's a bit hard because I don't have an access to engrave on curved surfaces on my laser cutter, but I have seen one that you can 3D print and make yourself. So that might be the next project I'll do and the backlighting will be a bit better. But from all the photos I've seen, the backlighting on these things are really dim anyway. Uh, this is a bit of a pain in the ass to get on straight because you need to get the wheel if, if you know what I mean you need to sort of do this as you're putting it on so you got to put that in there and then push it all down at the same time because once you get the arm that holds the sensor on it's a bit hard to get the wheel on Just put a couple of nuts on this and then those nuts hold in that Arduino as well. Alright, so you can see how that sort of free spins on the motor there. And then that sensor will tell it when it's at north. Sensor's just held on with double sided tape. You can see its connections go down to the Arduino. These two plugs here, so it's got 12 volts in for the motor, so that's 12 volts off the cockpit, and then the other one is off the panel backlighting circuit, um, and that's what does those LEDs in there. Because I've got a separate panel backlighting circuit for everything else in the cockpit, I decided to run that off that circuit. Um, it would probably be a lot easier if you just connected those LEDs up to the Arduino, because you could definitely power three LEDs off the Arduino. Um, and then it would be sort of a standalone unit. All you'd need is one USB cable and 12 volts in for the stepper driver motor. Um, but I've got two 12 volts in just because of my backlighting. Um, but that's that's just for my cockpit. If you were making this, you could probably do it a little bit separate. So the, the code to run this was not made by me. So I, I can show you the link to where it is. It'll be down in the description below. Um, I didn't do any of the coding for this. I found it for free already to go on the forums. All I did was add the um, lights for the indexer and also I'll explain to you what the other change that I made okay so here it is sort of set up on the workbench um, plugged in all it's got is 12 volt power in um, to run the motors and the USB cables connected to the Arduino Nano this is just that um, indexer connected just to so show you that it works off the same Arduino um, so you can see that right now it's not zeroed you can see that this is just free spinning so as soon as I open up DCS BIOS, this will go through a quick startup and zero itself. So you can see that because it got a signal from DCS BIOS, it knows to go through a startup procedure, so it zeroed itself. It moved itself till that sensor found the nail, which is the north position, and it's ready to go. Now that DCS BIOS is running, I'll fire up DCS and I'll quickly just jump in the jet and I'll show you uh, that it works in the game. All right, so the game's running, you can see the inset there and you can see the compass on the workbench. Um, so when I bank the jet, you should see the compass move. Um, so the center point will sort of be here. There'll be a piece of glass with a white line on it to mimic the one you can see. And then when I bank, you should see it move. Warning, autopilot. Now this shows the glaring issue. You can see how, you can see the actual one in the game is like a real compass. Um, it, it's got different axis of motion. It's got a, a pitch, a yaw, and a roll like a real compass is. Um, so I, I'm i getting the data for my compass straight out of the HSI. So the, it, it regardless of the angle on which the jet is, the compass will always move to where your nose is headed. So rather than do that sort of crazy deviation that a real compass would do because it's um, got three axes of motion. My compass, you can see on the workbench, is very, very smooth. It's basically pointed exactly where the nose is. 
So I did that just by taking the data out of the HSI rather than out of the standby compass. So I could get the rotation to match the one in game, but because it's missing the other axis of, of motion, it, it looked a bit weird. It looked like it was broken. Like all of a sudden it would, you'd bank, it would stay still, and as soon as you leveled out, it would go really quick to the next bit. Um, I, ju I just found, although it's not realistic, I prefer my compass to have a nice smooth motion like it is now. So it's basically pointing to where the nose of the jet is. Now you'll see that when it gets around to the zero point again it will skip a little bit so the code that somebody wrote not me uh, the link will be in the description um, once it senses zero it will re-zero itself so you won't get any sort of errors in it and you'll see that now when the nail gets around to the sensor and when we start pushing north you will watch the compass sort of slip a little bit when it re-zeroes itself See that? It re-zeroed itself at north again. So this instrument here is what my compass is getting its, deta its details for. You can see when I bank, it's mirroring what's on that HSI rather than, the, rather than on the actual standby compass in the game. It's nice and smooth and it also, it always um, is pointing to where my nose is, regardless of what sort of pitch angle or bank angle I'm on. Also, please um, ignore the terrible graphics. I'm in the, I'm on an old, ten-year-old computer in the garage. That's why DCS is looking so terrible. This is the case, fresh off the 3D printer. Um, I'll use this opportunity now to show you how I finish it. So this is printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height, so you can you can see that it's 3D printed. The way I overcome that is by sanding it, filling it, and then repainting it in black. So what I'm going to do is just sand it with some um, 600 grit sandpaper just to get rid of that ele elephant's foot. You can see there's a little bit of a gap there where it was stuck on the bed. Um, so that'll smooth that out. And then what I do is I just hit it with some acrylic spray putty. The key to this stuff is to spray it on really, really heavy so it fills in all those lines and then sand and paint. So when you scuff it with sandpaper like that, you can obviously see the lines in it. The putty will fill in all those lines and then I'll hit it with sandpaper again in a final coat of black and it should be pretty smooth. So there it is all sanded and ready for the putty. All I really do now is hit it really heavy. So I'll, um, I'll spray it, let it dry for 10 minutes, spray it, let it dry, spray it, let it dry until I get all sides. You don't want to hit it on the side because it will just run down. You want to fill in all these gaps. So basically I'll just do a really heavy hit on the top, then let that dry, flip it, same thing, flip it, same thing, flip it, same thing. It takes only about 10 minutes to dry. The key to this is it's not like spray paint. You don't want to do light coats. You want to do really, really heavy coats. You want it to be wet so all those gaps get filled. So that's how heavy you want it. Um, You'd never spray paint colour like that because it'll turn out terrible, but you want this to be really thick and heavy because you can sand the top of it off and it will fill in those gaps. So I don't normally wait for it to dry completely, I just flip it over and do the next side. Um, it's probably set enough now that it's not going to run. So I'll just flip it over and do the same thing on this side. Let that dry. So here it is with the spray filler on it. All I'm going to do now is again sand it with 600 grit um, to get it as smooth as possible and then hit it with black spray paint. So you can see that it sands really well, it's just, just like chalk this filler. Um, basically what I'm going to do is sand it so all these dark blue lines are gone so I know it's perfectly flush and then do that on every side. So you can see that's pretty smooth. You can see a line straight there. I'm probably gonna hit that with another coat of um, filler just to get that line out. 
but it's looking pretty good. All right, that's probably it. Now I just need to, again, wash it off and then hit it with some black spray paint and it'll be done. And I'll just use Rust-Oleum flat black. All right, so here it is uh, painted flat black. You can see obviously the finish is a lot smoother than it was 3D printed. There's still some blemishes in it, but I actually don't mind having a little bit of blemish in it because it makes it look like it's real. What I do is rather than try to hide the little scratches, I dry brush them with aluminium to make it look like it's a dent in the metal and it comes up heaps better. It looks heaps more realistic, I think. So that's pretty good. Uh, all I do now is slide the compass or the G meter, whichever one it is, in there. And then there's a rear thing on the back and then it gets bolted up. All right, so let's go do that. Okay, so this is the front cover that I came up with. You can see laser cut, really simple. All it is is um, a couple of layers of plastic. Uh, the glass is just glued in the rear here. Um, doesn't look perfect on the rear here, obviously. It's all super glue. The, these um, screws don't actually do anything. I actually ended up just cutting them off and super gluing them in there um, because I didn't want it to foul on the wheel in here. Uh, and then that is just a piece of white tape in there cut to make a little bit of a pointer. Uh, this is the main body, uh, you can see that I had to modify it a little bit, I just cut that bit out, um, I'll fix the design before I put it live um, up on the website, uh, just because I needed to be able to slide this in there and I couldn't work out a way to get it in when it was failing on that. So the rear, the rear cover here, I ended up printing, you can see just with the two top bits holding it on, so it will get held on like that. Um, and then I ended up laser, uh, I painted all this up and then just laser cut legends in there so I can see what. So that's the USB port, 12 volt for the power and the panel backlighting. Um, so the first thing you do when you're putting it together is this indexer goes on the bottom here. And you can see that I've made a hole here where you, so you can fit a screwdriver in to tighten those screws. So I'll do that now. And then all you do now is slide this. You can see how it's got those screws on it. That just acts as a bump on the floor. And then you just slide that in. I'm just gonna make sure all the cables don't fail. Like that. Uh, and it goes far enough forward that those screws hit the front of that. And that's what holds it in place. Um, those screws, if, if, you, if it wasn't flat, you could just adjust those screws to get it nice and straight. Uh, those get bolted into the rear panel, and then the panel goes on the back and holds it up. And then obviously the front piece goes on the front like that. Alright, so that is the unit complete. Uh, you can see that I just dry brushed some silver on the edges there to make it look a bit worn. Uh, same here, I actually broke the bit of plastic when I was trying to over tighten that screw. And rather than cut a new one and fix it, I decided just to leave it and make it look like it's really broken. So I just put a whole bunch more weathering on that edge there. This is just paper, uh, temporary for now. I will, I will probably cut it out of um, some thin sheet metal later on, but I actually don't mind it like that. I think it's looks a bit worn and does the job. And they're just held on with some screws. Uh, and then the rear here, you can see that there's only the two top screws holding it on. You can see the USB for the Nano, 12 volt power and the panel backlighting. Uh, if I connect to the panel backlighting the 12 volts, you'll see that she lights up. You can see the three LEDs in there. That, that's sort of 12 volt full power. It probably will never be that bright, but it does the job pretty well, I think. Uh, Anyway, so what I might do now is I'll just get it put in the cockpit, connect it all up and we'll take it for a spin. Okay, so here we are sitting in the jet. You can see that the compass is now installed. Uh, the reason I stuffed around with the lighting is because I wanted it off the correct lighting loom. So when you go down here onto my lighting control panel, just like in the real jet, the auxiliary instruments dial controls the backlight of the compass and the G meter. Uh, it also does all the other gauges. So 
that controls the brightness and you can see up here the brightness is so that's full brightness and then I can sort of dim it down to where I usually have it is only just a little bit brighter uh, the reason I had that loom go across to that one is because it's also adjusting the G meter uh, I'll get into the G meter on another video because I have not finished it yet the other thing I installed is there's a relay in that switch as well so I can turn them off with that switch just like in the real jet and turn them back on with that switch which is pretty handy. So just like the real jet, that controls the brightness, that controls the on and off with the accelerator and the compass. All right, so um, we'll just sort of bank off to the right here and you'll see the compass will start turning. All right, so you can see that it turns pretty well. It's going off the HSI, as I explained on the workbench, so it's always nice and smooth. and it's pretty accurate. So you can also see that when I come down here and push the signal lamp test button, I get the lights on the indexes light up. Uh, so that, those LEDs have been run off that same Arduino that's running the compass and seems to work really well. I know it's not realistic, they're supposed to be Envis green, but I kept them colored based off my F16 ones because I like the splash of color in it. Looks good, I think. Uh, one thing I wanted to add too, I did originally have a plan for this. I was going to put, I actually bought the vibration motor out of a PlayStation controller. I was going to install it in there and then when you fire the gun, it would have sh shaken around a whole bunch. Um, similar to that very famous video going around, you can see this thing just goes to water when the gun fires. But I decided not to do that based on the fact that it's, I couldn't fit it all in this small thing. If I had done it, it would have been about that big and it would have looked a bit weird in my opinion. So I, I just couldn't get it all compact enough in there with enough room and mounted on rubber so it would move around enough. I tried a couple of experiments in the garage and I just decided not to do it. I get enough of a vibration anyway with my butt kicker in the seat when I fire the gun. I've got it set to 120% and it shakes this whole cockpit anyway. The other reason I didn't want to do it is because this whole um, sort of hanger thing is only 3D printed and the constant vibration would probably just break it. Anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks heaps for watching. Uh, stay tuned to the channel, make sure you like and subscribe. I've got another video coming too on a whole bunch of other updates I've done like the tablet mount for one and the tablet in there running maps and I've got a new Verpal gimbal down there uh, and some other little things I've changed around the cockpit. So stay tuned. If you've got any other questions, hit me up in the comments below or check out the website thewarthogproject.com. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.